The Wall Street Journal revealed earlier this month that OpenAI CEO Sam Altman hopes to raise trillions of dollars to transform the global semiconductor industry in an effort to increase chip production capacity and fuel greater artificial intelligence. What is the main AI project that Sam Altman is working on and does it seem like a very realistic plan? More processing power is needed for ChatGPT's AI models than most people understand. According to Willie Shi, a Harvard Business School professor and former IBM employee, Altman might spend trillions on data centers, which house the GPUs required to train the AI models that power businesses like ChatGPT and Sora, if his goal is to create larger models for OpenAI. According to research firm IDC, the US market for data center development was estimated to be worth $24.63 billion in 2024. He could thus purchase 40 times as many data centers as there are now if he spent $1 trillion on chips. According to Xi, data centers currently consume more than 1% of the nation's electrical supply. To support this new data center, Altman would therefore need to construct a large number of electrical producing facilities, which generate electricity from a variety of energy sources. Next, it would have to modernize the electric grid itself, which is responsible for distributing energy to the data centers. A trillion dollars would probably be a decent investment when you take into account the amount of money being spent through the Federal Inflation Reduction Act and the infrastructure and investment act to encourage the production of clean energy and grid modernization in the United States, according to Xi. Maybe Altman wants to increase the amount of chips produced worldwide. Only a small number of cutting-edge fabs or manufacturing facilities that create chip parts are now under construction worldwide. These include, among others, Intel's locations in Arizona, Ohio, and Israel, TSMC's locations in Taiwan, Arizona, and Japan, and Samsung's locations in Korea and Texas. Meanwhile, Bert Stein semiconductor expert Stacy Rasgan calculates that $7 trillion could purchase over 200 state-of-the-art semiconductor fabs for $30 billion each. You would have to start constructing steel mills and concrete facilities with 200 or even 100 fabs, according to Xi. In addition, Altman would require a large purchase of construction equipment. According to Xi, it might take decades to find a supplier who can build the cutting-edge UV machines required for Altman's project scope. Then, there is the cost of hiring and training the labor force to staff the factories. The development of new factories in Arizona has been hampered by complaints from chip makers, such as TSMC, that workers lack the necessary skills for their CHIPS Act projects. Had money been an object of desire, China's $150 billion made in China 2025 investment in homegrown chips would have gone considerably further. According to Xi, China still hasn't fully attained independence. For example, a report from the Canadian Canadian bank RBC Wealth Management states that the nation imports semiconductors for twice as much as it spends on oil. The point is, even with all the money spent, are there enough resources available to achieve one's goals? The math doesn't appear to add up, at least not just now. What is happening in the generative AI chip race? Artificial intelligence has advanced to the point that programs based on AI can now gather data and learn to adapt their reactions to new information on their own. Thanks to dramatic advancements in the field since the earlier studies on mimicking the network of neurons in the brain. One of the main causes of generative AI's increased effectiveness and industry popularity as well as its high demand is its capability. One of the biggest problems is that generative AI requires a lot of data to train and operate, and it is also quite costly and computationally demanding. Thus, the need for high-performance graphics processing units is being driven by the demand for generative AI. To meet this demand, NVIDIA and Intel are two of the top chip makers in the AI accelerator market. The requirement for generative AI is expected to increase over the next 10 years, at a compound annual growth rate of 45%, according to Bloomberg analyst hitting $1.3 trillion by 2032. The rising usage of generative AI in a variety of applications, including drug discovery, financial trading, generating wiring, music and realistic images and videos is what's driven this expansion. There's an increased demand for generative AI, which is straining GPU supply. Consequently, GPUs have become extremely valuable in Silicon Valley, with some models reaching $10,000 per unit. Because of this, the market for generative AI is tremendously profitable and NVIDIA, Intel and other chip makers are competing to create accelerators that are faster and more potent by aggressively investing in their R&D departments.
since the majority of generative AI research labs and businesses utilize NVIDIA's GPUs, the company is currently the industry leader in AI accelerators. Its recent introduction of the H100 GPU has further cemented its position in the market. As the most potent GPU yet created, the H100 is intended exclusively for generative AI applications. More than 10 times faster than the previous generation of GPUs, it can give performance of up to 100 teraflops. Because of this, it's perfect for developing and executing massive generative AI models. The Grace Hopper Superchip, another GPU that NVIDIA is working on, is a single chip that combines a GPU and CPU. It now has even greater power than the H100. NVIDIA's CUDA toolset, in addition to its hardware, is a significant factor in optimizing the performance of its GPUs. CUDA is a parallel computing platform designed exclusively for use with NVIDIA GPUs, allowing developers to create high-performance AI applications accelerated by GPUs. As more organizations and researchers use CUDA, NVIDIA appears to be engaging in a vendor lock-in tactic. This clarifies why NVIDIA dominates the accelerator industry by forcing its users to rely solely on NVIDIA GPUs. Recently, Chinese IT businesses placed an order for $5 billion with NVIDIA for their A800 GPUs, which are a scaled-down version of their A100 GPUs. The Chinese tech giants, such as Baidu, ByteDance, Tencent and Alibaba, are eager to accelerate their AI goals and may buy additional GPUs in the future, since they think the US may soon enact stringent export regulations. In the upcoming years, it is anticipated that the generative AI business will expand quickly, and Nvidia is in a strong position to benefit from this expansion. For companies and researchers looking to develop and implement generative AI applications, the company offers the necessary hardware, software and community support. In the generative AI market as of right now, NVIDIA appears to be the undistributed leader, and this trend is probably going to continue in the years to come. The business has a solid reputation for innovation and is always creating new and more potent GPUs for the use in generative artificial intelligence applications. Additionally, it boasts a sizable and vibrant developer community that uses its GPUs to create generative AI applications. The second biggest chipmaker in the world, Intel, is keen to unseat NVIDIA's monopoly in the market for AI accelerators. For a few years, NVIDIA has dominated this sector, but Intel is currently putting a lot of effort into catching up. Intel has been making significant investments in AI R&D, and it is currently developing many new generative AI accelerators. The Gordy 2 GPU stands out among them all and is anticipated to pose a serious threat to the H100. The new Habana architecture from Intel, which was created especially for AI workloads, serves as the foundation for Gordy 2. Additionally, it is anticipated to be more energy efficient than the H100, which might be a significant benefit in the market for data centers. What is the future of the generative AI chip race? In the upcoming years, there will probably be more competition between Intel and Nvidia as the need for generative AI solutions increases. The MI200 is also known as HBM2E, according to Trendforce Research. In 2024, it is anticipated that HMB3 and HMB3E would go widespread because of their improved speed and capacity possibilities. In an attempt to break into the industry, other well-known chip manufacturers like AMD hope to take 20 to 30 percent of the market. AMD is eager to modify Xilinx for AI use cases after making a significant investment in the company last year. Furthermore, cloud computing giants like Google and Amazon are making significant investments in creating their own AI chips for their data centers. AWS services powered by Amazon's chips are already available and they are far less expensive than those driven by Nvidia's hardware. The generative AI chip competition winner will ultimately have a significant influence on artificial intelligence in the future. The AI sector will eventually gain from the protracted and difficult struggle between the chip manufacturers. AI will become more affordable and innovative as a result, increasing accessibility for both consumers and enterprises. What are your thoughts on Sam Altman's massive plans to transform the global semiconductor industry? Do you think Sam Altman can revolutionize the semiconductor industry just like the way he revolutionized the AI industry? Do share your thoughts on the comments section below. For more interesting stories and updates, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon for notifications. It's goodbye for now.